Shalom. Once again, saints, I would like to thank the Lord for he has given us an opportunity to share the word of God on this platform where we share the word of life, the word full of life, the word that changes us. Yes, we don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And this is the word. I hope I'll find you well in Christ Jesus. May the Lord richly bless you. Before we go any further, let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of all, sustainer of all manifestation, we thank you, Lord, for your love and uh, we thank you for your grace and the favor that you have given us. More so, the favor to share your word as we come on this platform. Father, to share the word. We thank you, Father, and we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and to open our minds to revelations as you share your word to us. Bless every viewer in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray. Amen. Once again, welcome saints on this platform. May the Lord richly bless you. Each time I appear on this platform, I get excited because it is the word of God that, that makes me jump. Yes, I live by the word of God. May the Lord bless you. I say shalom in Jesus' name. Today we are going to share this word of God. Most of the sharing on this platform, you will find that there are more Educa educative or more educational. They are more uh, or tilted towards addressing a, a thirsty heart, somebody who is thirsty, who is looking for knowledge of the Word of God, and who is going deeper in analyzing his own personal life with the intention to prove or to develop his Christian life. This is why this is the main thing when you look uh, into the sharings we put on this platform. Therefore, I hope you are one of them. So I say, welcome. God bless you. Now, as you listen, uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch your mind and bring revelations as you'll be listening to this gospel. Because this sharing is not only in these words. As I, sh as, as I speak the word, I trust and believe that the Holy Spirit in you is also opening the way, the new, the new ways of understanding the word in you for your own personal growth and development and knowing God. Because Jesus says, Knowing God is eternal life. So make knowing God your goal. That's eternal life. Today we are going to share the word of God. Our topic today is uh, faith expressed in love. Faith expressed in love is the most important thing in our walk of faith, in our walk of believing, faith expressed in love. Otherwise, we are going to look at the importance of love in our walk of faith. As believers, if we take away faith, it means we are no longer believers. We believe what has been promised. And what has been promised is our faith. And our trusting what has been promised is our believing, our faithing in what has been promised. And that what has been promised has to be expressed. This is what we are looking, looking into. If you look in the previous uh, recordings on this platform, you see that we have talked much about faith and how it comes. 
And also we have talked about the word of God, that is the will of God, the importance of the will of God. Now we are shifting or moving further from faith or we are developing, uh, putting another brick on these, on these two, faith, the word of God, and the love of God. Faith not expressed is a faith non-existent. We express our faith through what we do. Your deeds, what you are known about, your deeds, they define you. Your deeds, they contain what we call a personal attitude. And it is that personal attitude that defines you in your deeds. Now we are going to look at the mind of Christ. As we preached before, as we all know that Christians should carry or should have the mind of Christ in order to function in faith. You can, you can visit our previous uh, sharing on this platform where we, we, talk, we shared about uh, functioning in faith. We expressed much on the mindset of a believer in order to effectively function in faith that the mind of a believer should be that mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. And when we go to the book of Philippians chapter 2, it says, put on this mind that was in Christ, his attitude. So what we are addressing now, it's about attitude. The attitude in whatever you do. That is the love. What is the attitude you use to respond to someone to respond to your children, to respond to your parents. What attitude do you display in your responding, in your response? What flavor do you add on to what you do? Before you go any further, let us read, open the word of God and read. Excuse me. Let us open our Bibles from the book of uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. That is where we are going to get our topic. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. It says, Colossians chapter 5, verse 6, it says. Let us start from verse 5. It says, But we who live by the Spirit eagerly await to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. Verse 6. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. Now our topic comes. What is important? What is important is faith expressing itself in love. That is the most important. Faith expressing itself in what attitude? Attitude of love, attitude of joy, attitude of peace, attitude of patience, attitude of goodness, faithfulness. Have this attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Now we have seen here, Paul is showing us that the most important thing is that your our faith is expressed expressed in love. When we go to the book of James, we know the book of James is the book of works, isn't it? Yes. 
it tells us that faith without works is, is it alive or dead? Yes, it is dead. You are correct. You are correct. Let us read from James chapter 1 verse 22. Then uh, we go to chapter 2. Let us read from uh, chapter 1 verse 22. It says, But don't just listen to God's word. You must do. Underline the word do. It says, you must do. You and I must do. It is the doing which is very important. Not the believing only. Your believing must be converted into doing. It is the doing that is very important. If your beliefs are not converted into doing, they are dead. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fool, fooling yourselves. If we don't do, we are fooling ourselves. 25, he says. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets us free, which, is, which means the word of God, and if you do what it says, can you hear that? If you do what it says, and don't forget what you had. Then God will bless you for doing it. Not for believing it, for doing it. It is the doing that most of us are missing. The doing. We have heard the word of God. For a long time we have been listening. But what's lacking is the doing. Then we ask ourselves, Yes, we have been doing. So what, do, what are the doings we have been doing if they are not the doings of, from the, of the word of God? There we have to repent. From doing what is not godly to doing what is godly, which is the word of God. Now we go on chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 14 and 17 and 26. Verse 14, it says, the same book, James, it says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if, if, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that faith save, you, save anyone? Which means, if I say I have faith, I have to express that faith in deeds, in works. Otherwise, an expressed faith is dead faith. It doesn't help anyone. That's why he says it, it, it. We are fooling ourselves if we don't do what we believe. It is the doing. Yes, it is the doing. Verse seventeen says. So you see, faith by itself, it's not enough. Unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. So unexpressed faith is dead and it is useless and it doesn't help anyone, at all, uh, anyone else. So we must do what we believe. It is the doing that God will bless. And it is the doing of what we believe that will define us. Otherwise, what the word James is saying here, let's finish uh, verse 26. It says, just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. Our faith, what we believe, we have to convert it into action, into works, into doings. Without converting our beliefs in act, into action, our belief is dead. It doesn't help us at all. This is what the writer James or the Holy Spirit through James is saying to us. After hearing the word, let us not just hear, 
but let let us convert that word of God into action. For it is the action that expresses our faith. So what does that mean? It means the, the doings we are doing, the doings we are doing express what we believe. If I say I believe in the Holy Spirit, and I don't express the Holy Spirit. It means my belief in the Holy Spirit is dead. Otherwise, what I express, which is not of which is not the Holy Spirit, is actually the belief I have, because it is being expressed in my doings. If you believe whatever you believe in God, if you convert it into action, that action vouches you, it stands for your faith. It is a symbol that is in existence, that is in witnessing what you believe. Yes, this is it. Our preaching is not only on doing, we are going to move, move further because we said faith expressed in love. So faith, on the word faith, let us put our doings. So it is our works or our doings expressed in love, which are important. If our faith works are expressed in love, then they are helpful to us and to anyone else. So what is important here is what flavor are you adding onto your works? For an example, we can have a dish of chicken, meat. We can cook. Different people can cook chicken. Someone does not put additives. Additives, I mean, you can, you can, you don't season it. Someone seasons it and the other one adds more additives. Even he can put some curry or pepper, something like that. You will find that they have cooked chicken, all of them, but they don't, the value of their dish depends on the additives they have put inside the chicken meat. Which means the additives are carrying the chicken to the consumer, whoever is going to eat. When he tests the meat, he doesn't say the chicken is nice. He says, oh, he talks about the flavor in the chicken. Not about the meat, mostly, but about the flavor. So God here has showed us that faith is important and faith has to be expressed in works, in doings. Then it is those doings, hear these Christians, it is those doings, the works that we do that should be expressed in love for the faith to be of beneficial to us or for our faith to be alive. Yes, it is the love. Because without love of God, without the love of God expressing his word, it is not functional. It cannot move. It cannot manifest itself. Because the word of God has to be manifested in love. For it to be beneficial and fruitful and successful. The Bible says, John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his son. He expressed his faith in redeeming us 
by packaging his his faith or his promises to us through giving us Jesus Christ who is the love of God so God had some promises to humanity to mankind but he put that faith that promise into love and that love was worked out by Christ Jesus who is the love of God so our works if they are not expressed in love our works if they are not expressed in love they are not of any benefit to us this is the most important thing Galatians is pointing to us. It says what the most important thing is, faith expressing itself in love. And we have seen through the book of John, James, that faith is works. Which means works, they express what you believe. What you do symbolizes what you believe. So otherwise, if you want to see what a person believes, just look at his works, the way he does things, the way he responds, the attitude. Remember, the book of 1 Corinthians 16, verse 14, it says, Speak the truth in love. Somebody can speak the truth in anger. Some can speak the truth in jealousy. Can somebody can speak the truth in, 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 in hatred. That truth spoken in anger does not help anyone else. But it is there for destruction because it, is, it has been expressed through the attitude of anger. But when that same truth is spoken through the attitude of love, you find it will be very effective and it is godly. So here we are learning that the things of God are expressed in love, are expressed in joy, are done in peace, in compassion, in goodness and faithfulness, in humility and self-control. Those are the channels of attitudes that express our faith or express godly things. Because through these, there is no law, no power can hinder them. But anger is hindered, is limited. Hatred is limited. Bitterness is limited. You can express the truth through bitterness. It will never be that truth of godly. Yes, we Christians, we should know that when we believe and we express our beliefs through what we do, and in doing that, we should do it in love. Yes, this is the most important which Paul is expressing to us through the book of Galatians. He says the most important thing is that faith must express itself in love or the works of faith must be done in love. Without going any further, we must understand that when we are to function in faith, we must function in faith by expressing it in deeds and those deeds must be seasoned with love for them to be godly and effectively the bible says god loved the world that he gave he could have expressed his love through anger by destroying us but he chose to express his love or his his love through jesus christ or his faith in us his intentions his desires to us through love that's why he says he gave us christ jesus as his works of love towards us jesus is the working of god's love to our, towards us 
Now, before we close, or we come to the end, let us see the power of love as it is expressed from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Oh, praise God. This is exciting. Now let us listen to this one. This is the most important thing. Let us hear it and do it. Here we are being shown the power of love. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, till, it, 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 till at the end. It says, If I could speak all languages of earth and of angels, but don't love others, I would only be a noise gong or a clinging symbol. If I had the gift of prophecy, even if you prophesy, right? On verse 1, even if I speak in tongues of the Spirit, if I don't have love, I am just a sounding gong. A sounding symbol. It says, if I had the gift of prophecy, even if I have had, I've got the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and, and, and possessed all knowledge, this is deep faith now, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, I could command mountains to move, but don't love others, I would be nothing. Just consider, pause and consider that. This is what we can see we, from without. We say, oh, that one is, is a strong Christian. He's a believer. He speaks with God. He is from God. This, the gift of prophecy is hearing from God. The gifts of faith of commanding things to happen is hearing from God. But remember, the book here is saying, if you do all that without love, that is, not, that is useless. It doesn't help anybody. It's empty. Here I want you to see the power of love, the flavor of love in doing things. Which means, even if in prophesying, you should prophesy in the flavor of God's love. In speaking tongues, you should speak through, express that through the love of God. Verse 3, it says, If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I don't love others, I would have gained nothing. Which means love is the element that gives value to all our works of faith. Can you see that? Can you see that? Love is that element that defines your works of faith or defines your, your gift. Of the spirit do you speak in tongues do you prophesy do you have uh, the gift of faith can you give yourself to be bent because you believe it you believe in Christianity yes or do you give out everything you own it is important to do all that but here we are being warned what flavor are you putting on? Is it the flavor of love? It is only with the flavor of love that all the works of faith are valuable. They become of value if we put love in it. God gave us freedom in Christ Jesus because he packaged it in love. God works with the flavor of love, which means without the flavor of love, it means that works, 
that work we are doing is lacking God himself. Because First John tells us that God is love. You can prophesy. So many spirits prophesy. It is an ability given to you. You can, you can have faith. You can give everything as an ability. But if that ability is not flavored with the God's love, it is empty. This is the important, the most important thing. If you are somebody looking for a personal development, maturity in faith, these are the things you focus your eye on. Are my works, doings, flavored with love? Without love, whatever you are doing, could be in vain and useless. Let us proceed as we come to the end, concluding with this reading. Verse 4 says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealousy or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustices, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless but love will last forever. Now, our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grow up, I put away childish things. Can you see that? If you are moving from childish, from being a child into a mature believer, you put away the, the, the old way of thinking like a child. Because you would think that prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, the gift of speaking in tongues is more important. No, it is important. But the most important of all is those things expressed in love. So make love your goal. When you read chapter 14, it says, make love your goal then. It goes further, it says, but love will last forever. Verse 9, it says, now our knowledge is partial and, and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the world, of the whole picture, but when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Verse 12. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzled reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect, with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely just as God now knows me completely. Listen to your last verse. It says, These three will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. If you look at these threes, their bases, their foundations are the same. It's promise. It's promise. Whatever God has promised. God has promised and whatever God has promised has brought to me hope. Hope in a Christian, hope in a to a believer is not something that you say it might happen or it might not happen. Hope in the life of a believer is a guarantee that it will happen. For God gave us his spirit as a guarantee, his faithfulness. 
It stands for the faithfulness of God in the promises thing, in, in the things he promised. And the things he promised is our faith. And that was what that is what we believe. And when we act upon those promises, we are converting them into actions. And it is these actions that we should flavor with God's love. That's why faith expressing itself in love is the most important thing. So I say, Shalom. Yes, it's not easy. It's a long journey. Yes. Let us look into our deeds. What flavor we are putting on. Do you express that? Are you expressing that truth in anger? So that people will say yes, no. When you express the truth, express it in love. That is godly. When you are talking, do everything you do in love. Everything we do should be done in love. Amen. Yes. Let us read this in, 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 uh, in closing. Let us open our books from 1 Corinthians. We were reading from 1 Corinthians 13, right? Just to go to the same book, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 now. If we go to verse, verse 13 and 14, you hear this. It says, Be on guard, therefore, stand in faith, be courageous, be strong. Verse 14 says, And do everything with love. I say shalom. May the Lord give you the strength and the understanding and the knowledge to perform his acts in love because that's his pattern. In love. May the love of God be manifested in your life. May the love of God be manifested in your life in Jesus' name. May the love of God be manifested. Whatever you will do, manifested in the love of Christ. The manifestation of your faith, which are your works, must be done in the love of Christ. May the Lord grant you the ability to manifest your faith in the love of God, for it to be effective, for it to last forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive the ability to manifest the works or the will of God in his love. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let me pray for those that are not feeling well. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the ability and I thank you for the availability of your healing which you have given to those that call upon your name. We call upon your manifestation, Lord, that your healing flow in those that are not feeling well those that are attacked by various diseases, including COVID-19. In the name of Jesus, let them be healed. In the name of Jesus, let them be healed. Father, I thank you. Father, I glorify your name. Reveal yourself. In the name of Jesus, we pray in the power of love of Christ Jesus. Amen. I say shalom. God bless you. God be with you. God guides you in Jesus' name. Shalom.